Now that we've got a rapid fire introduction to common compressors, let's quickly discuss compressor control. The purpose of compressor control is to efficiently match compressed air supply to compressed air demand. You don't want too much and you don't want too little. Additionally, you don't want to spend a lot of money doing it. Consider the questionable choice of simply not controlling the compressor and letting it run all day. Here I've illustrated a motor prime mover, compressor, receiver, and a pneumatic system. In theory, if the demand of the pneumatic system perfectly matched that of the compressor output, this could work with the receiver simply acting as an intermediary, allowing a chance for the recently compressed air to cool and any impurities and moisture to settle out. If, however, the pneumatic system experienced any idle time and demand dropped, pressure in the receiver would quickly rise to potentially catastrophic levels. For this reason, one might include a safety pressure relief valve in the receiver. As previously, if the demand of the pneumatic system perfectly matched that of the compressor output, the safety pressure relief valve remains closed and the system functions as intended. If, however, the pneumatic system experiences any idle time and demand dropped, pressure in the receiver again quickly rises, only this time, rather than risking a rupture, the safety pressure relief valve opens and vents the excess pressure back to atmosphere. When demand increases, pressure in the receiver drops, and the safety pressure relief valve recloses, the system continues to function as intended. If this pump and dump type of compressor control seems hopelessly inefficient, you are right. Why go to the trouble of compressing all that air if you're not going to use it and just dump it? This is terribly inefficient. Additionally, these two primitive means of compressor control, or lack thereof, rely on perfectly balancing the output of the compressor and the demand of the system with very little wiggle room. For this reason, other styles of more efficient and flexible compressor control exist. Compressor control schemes can be divided into two general categories, fixed speed and variable speed control methods. As implied by the title, a fixed speed control method keeps the speed of the compressor constant and varies the output of the compressor with valves or other movable components. In contrast, a variable speed control scheme can ramp up or ramp down compressor speed to match demand or just turn it off. One constant speed method of varying a compressor's output is by placing a throttle or modulation valve at the compressor's inlet, thus reducing or outright blocking the amount of air introduced on the suction phase and indirectly reducing the compressor's output. If you do encounter a dynamic compressor, you might also find the output of a dynamic compressor similarly throttled, thus directly reducing its output. Another constant speed method of varying a compressor's output is to adjust displacement per revolution with movable internal components. For example, a variable displacement vane compressor could adjust the eccentricity of the off-center rotor, where a perfectly centered rotor produces no flow and a fully off-centered rotor produces maximum flow. Similarly, a variable displacement rotary screw type compressor could adjust the travel length of the spiral rotor by selectively opening or bypassing chambers along the housing. Let's now examine some variable speed compressor control methods. One simple variable speed compressor control method is to start the compressor when you need it and stop it when you don't. Viewers will recall we examined start-stop compressor control in the air preparation elements and pneumatic systems lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. In this style of compressor control, a pressure switch in the receiver serves as the primary feedback to the motor about the status of pressure in the receiver. Based on this feedback, the pressure switch selectively starts or stops the motor. Below the set value of the pressure switch, the motor prime mover drives the compressor to fill the receiver. If the pressure on the receiver rises above the set value of the pressure switch, the pressure switch turns the motor off. If pressure on the receiver falls below the reset value, the pressure switch restarts the motor and drives the compressor to refill the receiver back up to the set value. In this fashion, pressure in the receiver stays inside a predictable span that the pneumatic system can then draw upon. Start-stop style compressor control is pretty efficient because the compressor either runs fully loaded or is fully off. However, motors above a certain size can't be started or stopped as often as this control method may require without overheating, making it only suitable for small and medium duty applications. While on the subject of motor starting, I should mention there are varying degrees of complexity and overlap for these types of compressor control. For example, to reduce the inrush current demand associated with starting a motor using the start-stop style of compressor control, one might also simultaneously throttle the inlet valve during a start, thus briefly unloading the compressor while the motor started. Lastly, an increasingly popular means of variable speed compressor control is to directly vary the speed of the prime mover driving the compressor with a device known as a variable frequency drive, or VFD, or inverter, or motor drive, a power electronics device that varies applied voltage and excitation frequency to a motor under its direction, thus directly controlling its rotational speed. Low demand is met with low speed rotation. If demand increases, rotational speed increases. 
Compressors and motors intended to work with motor drive should be designed for variable speed operation to ensure proper, efficient, and safe operation. We'll examine motor drives in greater detail in later lectures. All right, that is it for this super brief introduction to compressors and compressor control. Like I mentioned earlier, this was not meant to be a thorough lecture by any means as my cartoonish diagrams can only get you so far. This being said, I hope you gained at least a general idea of what to expect when you rip a compressor open in a hands-on lab and watch its guts spill out on the floor. Lastly, the compressor control schemes I blazed through are not as simple as one might initially suspect. Some of these are quite complicated and necessitate an understanding of analog sensors and PID closed loop control. This being said, I do hope I supplied at least a brief overview of some of the methods employed. In conclusion, this lecture introduced the reciprocating piston compressor, the rotating vane compressor, the rotary screw compressor, and the scroll compressor. Additionally, we briefly discussed fixed speed compressor control methods like valve throttling and variable displacement, and variable speed compressor control methods like start stop and motor drives. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.